I mean, it's interesting for us to come in here and see it. And, and uh, as you continue to bring more product online, the opportunities that will be around for us. I mean, right now we started with the chaga and uh, with the cheat curds. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a little bit of the fromage, uh, fromage fresh. And, and, and now it's about how do we incorporate some of the more more of the stuff that's coming online? And so it's, it's kind of interesting to be able to see what's what you're working on and what's coming and where we go from. Yeah, there. the stuff that comes a little earlier, the section over here is all of our cheddar. That'll be medium age, so that'll be available relatively quickly and and kind of a good introductory to customers too. Like the the really aged reserve isn't going to be for everyone, but the flavors in our regular and and medium cheddars will kind of give people a little peek at what's coming. So your medium, how long is that aging now? Three, four months? Or? Yeah. About yeah. That? Okay. And then what's the reserve going to be? Well, you'll start that at about 12 months and, and kind of ease into it to see where that sweet where spot's going to be. I'd like to see a two year aged. Yeah. Um, so this has been, we've made a few runs. We're just talking about getting more and starting to fill that up with yeah. a few more runs of it. Very traditional cheddar. It's uh, for us, it's a little bit special because we actually render the Wagyu tallow and then use Wagyu towel on the outside of these cheddars. So it's the it's it's fat from our Wagyu Holstein crosses and then rendered down to give us the the uh, fat or the tallow, the, the rendered material to seal the cheese. Yeah. So these form their own coat, their own exterior, and those ones you kind of put a cloth and then put the put the fat on it and you let the bacteria and everything feed off of that. And uh, yeah. and then that creates also if you cut that open like that shouldn't uh, on a well made block of cheese that's not going to be interior no so what are you looking for when you take that out so i'm looking for texture so it's a little bit crumbly towards the inside the okay. cheese actually ripens from the outside in yeah it makes sense yeah so still a bit crumbly at six months um, Obviously the nose. The nose. Yeah. Um, Canadian cheddars are traditionally a little bit more creamier and uh, in mouthfeel. So we'll, we'll look at that as well. And yeah. part of that is just because of the uh, the higher butter fat in some of the milks okay. that they're used. Because that will give you a more creamier texture. And especially the, the butter fat here is minimum 3.7%-ish. Yeah. yeah all the way up to four so we have a little bit of variance in the batches okay there you go so on the outside i imagine the flavor is going to be a little bit more robust than even in the center right. at this point right still a little bit creamy yeah well that's why it's six months we still need another six so. that's nice though already in six months but yeah you can definitely get the creaminess eh so this is our chaga cheddar section. Uh, chaga cheddar is unique to Lakeside Farmstead. We take chaga, the chaga uh, fungus that grows on birch trees. Ours comes from Lacrete, and it's well known for kind of a rich, smoky, sweet without sugar. It's a it, an old, uh, you know, it's got all the history of being good for your immune system and all the micronutrients and and uh, flavors and things in it. So when I tried a cup of the tea, I tried it with milk and thought that it blended. And uh, that led us to a few other trials and then into this chaga cheddar cheese. So this cheddar is actually ready a little bit, a little bit earlier than uh, the typical aging. It gives it amazing flavors. So it does transfer across. We, we soak the curds into the chaga tea that we prepare and then let it take its course. So not only influencing the flavors, but also a little bit of an enzyme effect that changes the texture of the cheese. It's unique. So, uh, you know, people are certainly in that realm of not, not familiar with it, haven't seen it before. Honestly, as a chef, I mean, and, and when you said chaga cheddar, I'm like, what's that? That's a cool name, but I don't even know what chaga is. So yeah. I had to learn a little bit as well too. And a cool really looking cheese. Yeah. Um, everybody that tries it loves it. It's just yeah. got a little bit of a characteristic that brings you back and you just keep kind of nibbling away on it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure this cheese is going to do really well for us. I think so too, yeah.
Okay. That's the nature of Holstein cows right there. Hello. All right, so this group here is uh, just off of milk and, and just in a grower pen. Right up front are a, a dairy cow, a future dairy cow. The blacks are crossbred, so that's what we're gonna talk about next is the beef program. These are Speckle Park crosses. They came out uh, black. And one in the background there is one of the Wagyu Holstein crosses uh, with the blue tag, so, and, and a Holstein steer. So this pen, you know, it's a, it takes a long time. These animals here are in that uh, three to four month range of age. And uh, they just, you match them up, you let them socialize, you let them just continue growing slow and kind of working through their, working through living their best life, lounging and getting fed. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous to be honest. It looks <laughs> like they got it pretty good. <laughs> That's it's the goal. amazing to me how, how lean the, the wag you are. You know, you always associate them with being such a well marbled and high fat uh, beef. You'd think they'd be thick, but they're, they're, they're pretty lean. They well, take a while to put on the They fat. take a lot longer, so they grow a lot slower. They'll actually kind of slide back in the program and, and hit different feed rations at different times. Okay. And then eventually on the grower ration, you'll get a nice finish on them. But the, the goal there is the internal marbling, right? Yeah. So it's a very different look and uh, the animals are different. So these, these crossbred speckle parks, speckle parks, more of a beef breed. You're seeing a little bit of a thicker animal. Yeah. They will finish a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker and just give you a different product. So it's really interesting that we've been playing with that crossbreeding and the Wagyu and the Holstein and notice the qualities and textures in, in a very positive way. Yeah. Um, and then we're coming off of a lot of criticism in the dairy industry in the last few weeks on the different fat and what that fat is like in butter. Yeah. Um, I guess that story is yet to be told because I, I would suspect that there's a genetic component that we haven't yet Identified. grabbed. Yeah. Because as we get, as we're looking at animals that can produce a higher quantity of butter fat, there's genetic components that allow for that that I think are probably a bigger part of the picture than There's so much science involved nuance. in farming that I never really fully grasped until I started getting to know you. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's uh, a lot of um, process to have a great, uh, an efficiently run farm and, and animals that are producing at their best and giving you a great quality product, right? And looking for efficiency and understanding the technical side is what drives that. And yeah. it's on the production side, whether it's equipment, you know, genetics in the field, how we feed our crops, and then, and then coming through the animal side as well. So yeah. uh, never a dull moment here on the farm. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so our, our feedlot and our steers and, and critters are, you know, raised a little bit different. They're they're used to being around people a little bit more. Yeah. This is a Wagyu Holstein cross. He's got a ways to go, but you're starting to see a fair bit of finish under this heavy winter coat on him. Yeah. And you'll see it across across the ribs and across the back that they start to fill, fill out. out a bit, yeah. yeah. And get a little bit of a shine on them. Yeah. Pretty much you get them ramped up on feed uh, around for us around the one year mark. Okay. And we're looking for. Uh, at least on our farm, 300 days, 365 days on feed for our Holsteins. These Wagyu's you want over 400 days on feed. This one's already at 450, but I think he's got a little ways to go yet. Yeah. Um, we, feed a we feed a little bit less yeah. barley. I coat. <laughs> and a little, uh, little longer. So you got to watch that energy balance so that they stay healthy that whole process through to get yeah. them that many days on feed. Yeah, really you want a little a bit science. of attention too, hey? <laughs> Well, good to uh, have you at the table, Jeff. It's been too long. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. We might as well enjoy one of our delicious burgers while, uh, while we're talking. Yeah, we have a chat. Some uh, good Noni beef grilled up perfect. There you go, yeah. Yeah, so it's been uh, a fun journey, I think, back to our, our first getting to know each other back in, uh, what was it, uh, probably late or early 2016. I think uh, you and I were both on uh, Jesperson's show. Yeah, right and when you were opening the doors at workshop. Yeah, we had only been open a couple of months and did a radio spot together. And I'm like, well, nice to meet you. Take care. And never thought I'd see Jeff again. And here we are five years later uh, doing a lot of business together. So it's uh, interesting how things come, ar come around, eh? So. Yeah. So back, uh, 
Back then, beef was something that uh, our, I was very comfortable with on the farm, that we had a quality product. Um, not really going... I'm going to dig in. Not, not really <laughs> going to retail or having it available yet, but knowing that, you know, that was an option. And uh, even at that time, probably a pipe dream to be making some cheese and connecting more with consumers. So looking for opportunities to um, find find businesses and find connections that we could make directly to consumers. And uh, yeah, I still remember wheeling in with some cheese, much to your surprise. And if my memory serves me correct, I pretty much blew you off the first time because I was still getting my butt kicked because we were just opening the restaurant and wasn't really able to keep up all that much. So I'm like, yeah, thanks for the cheese. Uh, I got to get back to work. Nice to see you. And then sure enough, you popped in a, a little while later and we chatted a little bit more and yeah, it sort of evolved from there, didn't it? Yeah, so finding a way to get some beef on the menu was um, always a challenge with a little bit of retail connections and trying to find cuts that work for you. And I guess the quality spoke for itself after a bit of time. Uh, with, with Woodshed coming uh, on, on board, it gave you some options. And I don't know, I guess from my side, always knowing how complex it is to use a whole animal. And uh, your journey, I guess, in discovering that yourself and some yeah. of the decisions you made to get to where you are. And that was a process for us. I mean, Workshop itself was a pretty small restaurant and uh, didn't afford us the opportunity to hang on to, uh, you know, five or 600 kilograms of, of meat and figure out how you were gonna manage that. Um, you know, so working with you in the get-go was, was difficult in that we had this sense of responsibility that we wanted to use whole animals whenever we could. And uh, it didn't feel right just taking all the, ni the nice cuts from you and not being able to, uh, to take everything. So uh, it wasn't until um, we kind of learned how to do that a little bit better, uh, started a charcuterie program that we could use some of those lesser cuts. Uh, but really, in, in, until we could take it to the scale we have now, it wasn't until we decided to do Woodshed. And, uh, woodshed Burgers was sort of, uh, um, I want to use the whole animal and I want to have fun and I'd like to do a concept that's complementary to Workshop but is maybe a little bit more casual and a little bit more fun. And it just sort of made sense to be able to, to go to that burger angle. And, uh, you know, that opened in July of uh, 20, I don't even know what year, 2019. Uh, 2019. And, uh, right from the get-go there, we managed to start using whole animals, and um, I think uh, we just pulled our 84th animal or 85th animal last yeah. last week, so uh, it's nice to be able to do that and nice to be able to uh, find ways to work with other partners in the community and to um, push our chefs to be a little bit creative to find ways to use everything. So, so being, being able to use the whole animal obviously is key to a program for for uh, my vision of trying to sell beef because I don't do retail. We have some retail partners. Um, Darcy's Meats has done a great job in St. Albert and, and with the Southside location and Range Road has their own take on things. Um, but your situation is pretty unique in that you control everything in-house and, and there isn't a retail component on, no, on your end. No, there really isn't. So it's, it's had to be, uh, we've had to be resourceful in finding ways uh, you know, between the restaurants, now bringing Greenhouse on as well, it uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility, but we've had to get creative and, okay, well, we're selling a lot more uh, burgers right now so that, you know, we need more trim. How do we move these other cuts? So, yeah, occasionally we do a few retail packs here and there or sell some one-offs to, to customers that, uh, in, you know, enjoy, you know, buying 10 or 12 steaks at a time. And, uh, but with that said, uh, a lot of it is just really finding ways to use everything in the in the restaurant. and. You know, we've got a great uh, brisket on the menu at Workshop now, and uh, that really allows us to use that cut in, in, at great length. And uh, we've done uh, roasts on the, like a roast beef sandwich on the lunch menu to use the outside rounds, and doing that at the golf course in the summer helps to move that volume as well. And uh, eye of round and, turns and into brisola. And just value out of as all the various cuts. Right, it makes it affordable, right? And um, it makes things a little bit more manageable. It also allows me to bring you know, great quality steaks to our guests for a reasonable price. If I was just calling you all the time and taking the choice cuts, uh, I'm gonna pay a premium. And then you have the problem as the farmer going, well, what do I do with the rest of this animal that I've got to do something with, right? So, yeah. so the commitment that you control here is, is having the burger joints that can handle all of the trim and give you a ton of flexibility. And then the connection and, and the uniqueness of dry aging, uh, which is something you don't really have access to consistently outside of 
you know, the farm to plate, local abattoir, butcher scenario. Uh, adds to the adds to the beef, adds to the story of a great of a great steak, but uh, adds to the complexity too because you're you're hanging on to it and you're managing something that's got to sit for. It's it's made it problematic weeks. for me because I can't just buy commodity wet aged beef anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of a snob now when it comes to it, and yeah, you really have come to um, open my eyes and uh, allowed me to appreciate uh, the real difference between. Uh, you know, good quality 30 to 50 or even 60 day dry aged cut of meat. And um, it's hard to go back when you're used to that complexity of flavor and um, uh, all those nuances that dry aging brings to the table. And just the, um, the punch in the face of beef flavor that you get. And uh, it, it's delicious and uh, hard to pass up. And we're, we're lucky we're able to manage that program and uh, work with, uh, with Travis at uh, Country Quality Meats to have a great, uh, abattoir partner who helps us manage he helps he helps me manage the inventory as well too because it is hard between uh you know the two woodsheds workshop and greenhouse pulling product uh, to to get a sense of well how many animals are hanging right now versus how much is dry aging on the shelf versus how much is out in the restaurants how much do i need to order because it's you know kind of you're look, you're forecasting you're looking ahead to go what are the next few weeks going to look like uh you know what are what, what's in the queue and uh, how do we prepare for that, right? Yeah, and that backs up to part of why our farm, being a dairy farm, and year-round calving fits into a partnership where you have year-round burgers to sell. Um, so we're able to finish beef and have animals ready every two weeks, and and you know keep the quality and keep the consistency and have everything in-house on the farm. So um, you know, I guess a sense a sense for consumers that just how special the program is and all the effort that goes in on our end to raise, you know, high end, high quality beef and, and all the players in between. Yeah, and you mentioned something really, um, and maybe it's a good segue there, you talked about being a dairy farm. And I think when we first started talking, I'm like, uh, you know, I grew up in Quebec and we ate a lot of dairy beef down there. And I, I really thought that was decent beef. And then I came to Alberta and I was just kind of pounded in my head that Angus is the way to go. That's that's beef, yeah. right? And. Um, and I'm like, well, I can't serve dairy beef. And then we started eating it, and it was just an incredible, uh, the tenderness, the flavor. Um, you know, it didn't necessarily always need to be prime quality marble to have comparable or even better flavoring to what I was used to eating here with, with commodity beef. And uh, so it was nice to, to get transitioned to that. And what I really love about where we've come with the story is now, your evolution now is that not only are you uh, a dairy farmer who's providing beef, but you're also now taking your milk and making cheese. And so now we have, I, I don't even, I can't, didn't even put one on the table, but we, you know, we were able to do our poutine with your cheese and we, the, uh, we make the gravy with the bones from the beef that we buy from you. Um, you know, all you gotta do is sell us the potatoes and we're working on that. But you know, it's kind of the whole gamut, right? And um, now we're finding ways as your cheese is coming to market, uh, you know, some of your aged products are starting to kind of make their way out into the market. We're able to work those onto our burgers and onto our menus at Workshop. And uh, excited to launch the new Workshop menu that features a few of those items and anxious to see as we explored the uh, the aging room today, what's coming down the pipeline and what we could be serving in the next few months or years. And right? the patience, right? The patience, yeah. <laughs> the patience on uh, seeing, that, seeing that through. It'll be nice to see consumers, uh, customers sit back in, at tables and restaurants and give them the opportunity to enjoy some of what we have coming down the pipe. Yeah, you know, and I mean, as a chef, we always talk about, um, you know, you can't make a good product out the front door if you're not getting good product in the back door. And I think that, uh, that this relationship has really allowed us to uh, take what great product you're providing and just you know make it amazing and what I love specifically about the you know if we're talking about the burgers today I mean what I love about it is we really don't have to do a lot to it it's it's the burger very very simple seasoning uh, and you know a, a smash burger on the flat top and we're not hiding it with lots of crazy flavors and toppings and that sort of stuff I mean my go-to right now is is quite often just the classic where it's lettuce tomatoes pickles a little bit of our woodshed sauce and the, the burger patty. Yeah. Today we put a little bit of the chaga cheddar on there just to mix it up, but um, it's nice to just be able to taste the beef and taste that uh, depth of flavor. 